welcome to the Challenge Tour. And with the end of an extraordinary 2020 in sight, welcome to our season-ending Spanish Swing. It's been difficult, it's been strange, you know. We're not used to spending so much time at home and kind of finding things to do, especially during the lockdown and stuff. To be honest, I wasn't sure until yesterday if the tournament's running <laughs> because of Spain. But yeah, it's a, it's a good place. So far, the weather is nice. I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a good test for us. I think the bad weather is coming, rain and wind, so it's going to be hard for us, but we will play our best. It's the home stretch on the road to Mallorca, a three-week period culminating at the Challenge Tour Grand Final. On the agenda before that, the Andalusia Challenge de Cadiz, and this week, the prestigious Andalusia Challenge de España. Nine events down, two to go. And on this curtailed road to Mallorca, following recent visits to Portugal and Italy, we now find ourselves on the southern coast of Spain. Our stopping point here, Cadiz, considered to be the oldest inhabited city in Europe and steeped in history. It's a stunning location, also famed for its spectacular beaches. Though of more relevance this week, it's also one of the continent's foremost golfing destinations and a fitting backdrop to this critical phase of the Challenge Tour season. It's the, the nitty gritty bit. At the end of the three weeks, you know, five lads are going to get uh, a card, albeit not, not the usual type of card, but it's, uh, it's still an opportunity for next year. So yeah, it's very important. It's weird, um, uh, all the travel is getting really hard. Um, lots of documents you have to watch for. But for the sporty side, um, I'm doing really good. So I'm happy with the results. So I'm happy with the way I'm playing. And um, it's in a balance, yeah, with negatives and positives. Ibero star Real Club de Golf Novo Sancti Petri is making its debut as a Challenge Tour venue, but the event itself is far from new. For 22 years, the Challenge de España has been one of our most popular events. Always enjoyable coming to Spain, no matter what time of year it is. It's, it's lovely, lovely place. For me, I live like one hour from here, so I know I know the course. I think it's a little bit advantage, but not that much because after that you have to play good shots, especially here into the green. So you have to hit a very good irons, especially in the par trees. There are a couple of uh, long par fours into the win. It's going to be a good test for us. As always, plenty of Spaniards in the field, of course. And among them, Pep Anglaise in fine fettle and third in the road to Mallorca rankings. In front of him, Richard Mansell and Marcel Schneider, as the jostling for those final positions really heated up. With three tournaments to come in, leading the field is, is obviously really good. It's in a good shape, the course. Green's rolling good. They play good golf the whole year, so I would say the chances are good. Simple as that. Hopefully you have this for to win. Get it. <laughs> and there would be reason to remain fairly cheerful come Sunday. The Spaniard just five shots off the pace. Higher up the leaderboard, the Dane Martin Simonson was great in the early stages. A six under par opening 66 was followed with a 69 on Friday. He climbed to nine under and the halfway lead by four shots. Then things slipped on Saturday. A 76 rather let him down, but he would still be very handily placed going into the final day. Sweden's Christopher Blomstrand opened with a 70, then a 69, and though he lost ground with a Saturday 73, he certainly couldn't be discounted. Flying the Finnish flag, Oliver Lindell began with an unblemished round of 68, going into the final day at four under. The Finn very much on track to eclipse his best result from Portugal in September. No surprise to see the name of Mansell weaving through the field. Here, Richard Mansell finding himself very much in the mix at five under and in sight of a podium finish. But two 
player shared pole position by Saturday night. Oscar Lengden, the Swede who prevailed in this tournament at Iski Golf two years ago, and a model of consistency here with 70, 71, then a 69. Alongside him, and also one clear of the field, home hopes pinned on Spain's Pedro Oriol. He opened with a pair of 71s and a 68 and was looking good, but at this stage it was congested and anybody's game. For me, I'm really happy to be in this situation again. I, I miss it and I'm going to, to try and enjoy as much as possible tomorrow and, and, and try obviously to win, but I'm, I'm very happy to be, to be in this position again. I'm, I think this year I'm, I'm, I haven't played much because of the virus, but uh, I've been doing things quite well and I'm really happy the way I'm playing, so I just need to, to stay patient and, and, and see how it goes, but I'm, I'm very happy the, the way things are going. So all was set for a potentially gripping final day. James Heath alongside me. James, you've been in this sort of situation many times and you'll know exactly the pressure these players would have been feeling as they made their final tweaks. Absolutely, Ivan, yeah. I mean, uh, these guys, as we see them going up through their warm-up routine, uh, they probably wouldn't have slept well last night. They're just trying to get themselves zoned in, going through all their little practice drills, just trying to get themselves ready, get them in the same mindset as the previous few days. Um, you know, just trying to uh, stay patient, as, as Pedro just said. And he, with uh, the hopes of a nation on his shoulders, that's a particular pressure, I suspect. Now, Matt Ford once applied to be a postman, but he's been delivering on the golf course of late, and with birdies on the second and here at the fifth, his performance, well, obviously, first class. And D'Souza enjoying a good week, starting the day at minus five. He did find water at the fifth, though. This is bogey putt, double bogey at the fifth. He'll drop a plus one for the day. And at this uh, venue, very demanding as you know, James, dipping under par every day, quite an achievement. So Oscar Langdon could be proud of himself. Two early bogeys though, quite a setback. And the Spaniard off to a very solid start in the second half. Reachable par five this week. Iron shot right over the flag. Sets up an eagle putt, hit two putt. For a birdie on the second, go one under for the day. Now hoping to forget yesterday and duplicate form from the opening two rounds, Martin Simonson launched Sunday with a bogey, but gains on the second and the fifth have more than balanced the books. Liza in the final group. He's very nervous. But trying to become the first ever man from Czech Republic to win on the challenge tour. Just playing a nice touch here at the second. He'll go on to hold that for a birdie at two. One under for the day. Now Richard Mansell bogeyed the third, but his response was emphatic. A birdie at the fourth, and this authentic prospect from the English Midlands would pick up another shot at the friendly fifth. The young man from Finland, Oliver Lindell, at the fourth. Nice break, 15 feet for birdie, two under for the day. It's all very tight. This is the very definition of the phrase. Everyone on the top of the leaderboard is separated by just two shots, no less than five players tied at the top. Back to the action with Lindell tackling the sixth at 354 yards, short par four. Pretty inviting birded by the 22-year-old Finn on Thursday. And middle of the green, a chance for another birdie, his third of the day already. Now up to the Spaniard. Pedro Oriel on the fifth. Nice solid start, one under for the day. Just off the left, lovely rhythm. Maybe that, that was a bit of a misjudgment there. He's above the ground. Now this fifth is one of those holes that really strikes fear into the hearts of most amateurs, but these guys are consistently peppering the pin. Let's see if it happens again. Commentator's curse? No. 
And after that gem, Lysa could well be adding to the growing birdie count. Now, yeah. so we're off to a fast start. Yeah, yeah, another one. At the sick, that's three under for the day. Fast start by the man from Finland. Well played. Back to the fifth next, and Oriol finding himself in three putt country. Let's just see. Well judged, but not quite a gimme for a par there. Oscar, out for you? Yes, please. Now to Mantle, sixth hole. Start. Remember the wonderful swing. Oh, it's got great balance. Wedge in hand from the fairway. You'd like to think this is going inside 10, 15 feet. Boy, it was at one stage. Didn't quite control the spin as much as he'd like. Oh, it's a back flag. He can be forgiven for that. This is arguably the biggest day of Lysa's career, so I wonder how frayed are the nerves there. Is it a swan? Serene on top, paddling like fury beneath. Let's see what he does with this. Good. Wonderful. Well, on that evidence, he's coping rather nicely and goes into the lead. That's a great start from the Czech Republic. Now, Pedro, so on his part from off the green should be a formality. But last day nerves and all. Sure. Well done, Pedro. Solid start, keep it up. Now, Mansell's approach was hurt by spin, but will his birdie putt make amends? It's fast, left to right. Great putt, good putt. Easy. Now, after his third round troubles, Simonson's on the comeback trail, but leading this super competitive Andalusia Challenge de España, it's Lindell, Lysa, and a quickly off the grid Richard Mansell. We've more from Cadiz and sunny Spain in just a moment. Autumn in southern Spain, and the sun continues to shine. But at the Andalusia Challenge de España, there was a grey cloud for Richard Mansell on the demanding seventh. A bogey on the par three, his second of the week there, sees him surrender a share of the lead. Slow start for the overnight leader, Oscar Lengden. Plus two through five. Showing great resilience here at the sixth. Nearly holding his second shot. That was up a birdie. Back to plus one for the day. Now Andre Lysa is a man in black who's deep in the red scoreboard wise. Despite the quality of that approach on the sixth, the birdie not forthcoming, but it's clear this 29 year old from Prague means business. Oliver Lindell from Finland picked up another birdie at the sixth to go three under for the day. Here he is at seven, narrowly missing that birdie putt. He'll remain minus three through seven. I'll start for the man from Finland. Lindell and Liza are joint leaders, but so many chasing and hot on their heels, including Langdon, with the necessary credentials, having captured his second Challenge Tour title here in Spain a couple of years ago. With a trio of pars on the seventh so far this week, he's not lost any ground on the field. The rhythm looked okay. Now the key thing, what about the result? Well, let me tell you, any green in regulation on this hole is more than acceptable. Now Liza on the same hole. Slightly down the hill, he'd be hitting a, a six iron in here. Loving that swing. Ain't like a man with a lot coming, which I like to see. Sets himself a nice chance up there, 15 feet up the hill. Now, Oriol's sole Challenge Tour success arrived at the 2017 Rolex Trophy. And that day, he closed with a 65 and wore a visor that once belonged to his great compatriot, Seve. If he can be equally inspired here today, 
then he might just bag the silverware again. You've got to admire that swing, James. Oh, absolutely. I've played with this man many a time. Very talented. Just lacking a little in confidence the last couple of years. He hold a few more putts on the greens. Lethal. Maybe today's his day. Now to Lindell. Fast start, three under through seven. Very talented. Young man from Finland. Still only 21 years old. Ooh, great little pitch there. Tapping birdie. That's gonna, that's gonna take him to four and through eight. Great start. Now to Oriol on seven. His pace judgment on the greens avoided a drop shot on the fifth, and he needs to rely on that again here. It's a nice roll. Unfortunate, but par should be his there. Yeah, pars are always good today, Ivan. Tough golf course now to the Englishman Ford, who's enjoying a great year. He's playing some great golf in the last two or three months. Carrying that on to today. Minus five for the tournament so far, so he's a little bit behind. He's a fast back nine. Solid approach shot there at nine. 20 feet up the hill. Back on seven, Langdon hovering over a realistic look for Birdie here. Ah, just a little on the low side, and he's left one of those coming back. You've had a few of those, James. I have, yeah. I've, um, I've hold some and missed some of my fair share. <laughs> we go to Lindell. It was just a formality. Beautiful little pitch. Don Oliver, keep it going. Up ahead again on nine, Ford with an uphill putt to reach the turn in 33. Decent backswing on that. And a decent bend over to pick the ball out of the hole. The veteran right there, and if experience counts for anything, one to keep your eye on here. Absolutely. He did say uh, about a month or two ago that he's found something is putting. Certainly been working for him. Now to Liza, we saw the approach shot. I think he's left himself in a good spot here. Uphill part, so he can be a bit aggressive. It's too long for the day. And at that point, Ford, Oriol, and Mansell were two shots adrift of Lindell and Liza. The joint leaders, but breaking news. After a birdie on the eighth, one man is now alone at the top. Liza attempting, don't forget, to become the first Challenge Tour winner from the Czech Republic. Liza's swing shows that he's embracing the pressure in his quest to make his country's history. And that shot won't harm him. He's got two putts to cover the front line in 32. Early swinging with a lot of freedom, a lot of commitment. You can see Ford. All the scorable holes in the back line. Playing tough all week. Bad line. We wouldn't expect better from there. Not many short game competitions with Matt. I know he's better than that. Now to Blumstrand. It's been eventful, let's just say that. Three bogeys set against four birdies, but the Swede, who tied third at the Joram Bank Open in Austria in July, could be in line for six under overall after that exhibition of Sandskin. Yeah, that was a sweet strike. You could hear it in the sound. Checked it up nicely. Now to a man I know is very good out of the bunker. Best short game I've ever seen. Pulled it here on the ninth. There you go. <laughs> no surprise. Great bunker shot by the Spaniard. That'd be a tap in par. Good man, keep it going. Now, by contrast, Ford's bunker shot wasn't the crispest, but the putter, well, it can paper over the cracks, can't it? Let's see if it does here. Yep. And that's four under today for an ever more serious contender who hasn't been guilty of a bogey since Friday. Now he's relentless with that putter at the moment. Can't miss a thing. Now Blomstrand, we saw the bunker shot. 
to be just outside right, it looks like. Lovely stroke. That moves him to minus six, two behind. Well done. Now the last group out are just finishing off the front nine and the leader has a birdie chance here. Liza on nine, a long one, but gettable. Nice. Oh, that is simply superb. Oh. Liza is out in 31, making a mockery of his relative lack of experience under this kind of pressure. It's great to see Ivan. He's very focused. Just trying to do the best he can on each shot. As it stands now, we saw that wonderful bunker shot. Should just be a formality. It's a par. Level par front nine. He's now four behind. He's going to turn something on on the back side. He's definitely capable. Well, for much of the early running today, this was wide open, but having improved to double digits under par, Liza has broken clear. In fact, he's three to the good. The back nine at Ibero Star Real Club de Golf Novo Sancti Petri, standing between him and a major career breakthrough. We're back soon. Welcome back to the Andalusia Challenge de España, where the ever-expanding number of golfers in the Czech Republic will be getting excited because one of their own, Andre Leiser, is in charge. The Englishman, Richard Mansell, level par front nine, solid stuff. Here he is showing a delightful touch. Par 5 11th. That'll be a tap in birdie to get the one over for the day. Four behind. And having kick-started his back nine with consecutive birdies, Christopher Blomstrand was targeting a hat-trick at the 12th. And it happened when that putt was converted. And that forward. You should be grateful. God, it's a thing. That's practically a gimme for the way he's putting today. Another birdie. You go to five under for the day. Only two behind the leader. Now it's always fun to see a promising amateur on the leaderboard, and that's the case with Edouard Rousseau, whose birdie on 17 was his sixth and eight holes, and this is a youngster with burning ambition. My plan is to be the best golfer in the world someday. I think I can do it. I don't want to run. I don't, have, I don't want it to be a, a rush, but it's important to keep progression, keep learning, and keep working. There are a lot of good players. Um, I'm just one more of them. When I was maybe 17, 18, when I made Junior Ryder Cup team, I thought that I have a possibility to and a good chance to be a good one, but I need to keep working a lot to try to get to a next level. Obviously 2020 hasn't been the, the best of the years. I, I, start, I started playing very, very well the first uh, four or five tournaments the first two months. Then with the COVID and the lockdown, I couldn't play obviously, but then I've been very lucky because I've played the, in Valderrama. That was an awesome venue. Uh, I learned a lot there. I think I feel a little bit more prepared than where I was. And then obviously in the US Open was an awesome experience. Uh, I saw all the best players in the world and I know I must not be as them because I'm 20 right now, but I know a little bit better how can I be like them one day. Well, for now, the future can wait. Back in the present, Rousseau's fourth in the world amateur golf rankings, his future potentially as golden as an Andalusian beach, especially when you consider he parred the 18th for a back nine of 30. I can tell you both Ford and the hard-charging Blumstrand secured a birdie on 13, which means that Liza, after a par at the 10th, has seen his cushion at the top trimmed to just a couple of shots. Yes, the man out front. Here is a, probably the most scorable hole on the back nine, the 11th. It starts getting a little bit tougher from the fairway. That's a nice little bounce. Just on the fringe. About 40 feet down the hill for an eagle. Richard Mansell has produced some outstanding golf on the satellite 
Euro Pro Tour last season and his transition to the next level this time round has been seamless. He's driven the 12th yeah. and with a couple of putts will surely climb to chance. seven under. His disappointing end to the front line Always. pretty much forgotten now. Yeah, nice comeback there from Richard. Good man. That's the Englishman. Man on fire out there. Five under on the last day. Two behind. Flag nice and aggressive. Like the look at that today. Steaming through the field, Blumstrand in prime position to make his fifth birdie in succession. Breeze just getting up here a little. And I wonder if that's the result. James, was, was that conditions or was that shot and swing? Well, it's that back flag, isn't it? It's the last day of a tournament, so you're, you're taking that risk on. As we see Liza here, we saw him on... Saw his approach shot. Stop. And this is fast. Stop. We've seen the bunker shots stop. down there. He's telling it to stop. Ooh. That was a bit of an error. At this stage, the last thing Blomstrand wants is shattered momentum, but his misjudgment needs to be tidied up here. Almost very good, but at this late stage, that's a bit of a knee knocker, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. All these putts at this time are, are worth valuable points and money. Um, as we see Mantle tap in there for birdie. Great drive to reach the green. I've seen anybody on there all day. It's a birdie. Now to Ford. I've been talking about his putting. You can't hold it up, can okay? Birdie chance here at 14 then. And he will be right in the thick of things. Man. He's on fire with that thing. Six under for the day. Hottest man on the golf course by far. Pulls within one. All that experience coming to the fore now. Absolutely. Now we saw Christopher's chip. Should be a formality, but as Ivan says, eh. that can only be nerves, Ivan. Seen them missed, as they say. And I think we just have. Yeah. We'll drop back to seven under, three behind. Still a bit of time, but he's going to need a very fast finish. Now the bird is flowing in the groups ahead. Could Liza keep his pursuers at bay? Yeah, this is to take a three shot lead again. Uh, got a lot of the hole. Gonna feel like he let one go a little bit there. On the green in two, walks off with a par. But listen, you two ahead. Stay in the now. You'd have taken it at the start of the day to be two ahead after 11. Well, perhaps over the next few holes, he's going to learn that winning does not come easily. Liza, still the master of his own destiny. He retains the narrowest advantage over Ford. More good news for the leader. He's nigh on driven the 12th. Yeah, nice aggressive play there at 12. We've had a few people laying up. He's decided to go for it. I'll tell you, Very nice. Yeah, it's a beautiful I'll little play. chip in front of the green. Sets himself five feet for birdie to extend his lead to four. Now, the 13th is the easiest test on the course today. Bird is actually outnumbering pars. Mansell unleashing. Movie. He had tree trouble there, didn't he? He had to get one up high over the trees and he's at a great shot to the front of the green. Oh, what price an eagle here? Absolutely. Needs it, I think, Ivan. That'll be to pull within two. Now Lindell, after that very fast start, can he maintain it on the back side? For birdie at 15. Yes, he can. He can want it one part. That takes him to eight under. He's three behind. Or could be three behind if Eliza holds his putt there at 12. Done the finish, man. You know what they say about standing still, you can go backwards, and that might well be the case here. Being level, probably not good enough. It would see you sliding back. Martin Simonson, wary of that. 
at the 13th, could take him back under the card. That left for a birdie, and maybe the start of what he would need to have a late push. Now Pedro electing to lay up off the tee. A lot of guys going for the green, he decided to lay up off the tee and push his approach shot. So, not what I'd expect of the aggressive Spaniard, but... We'll have that for par on what should be a you know, birdie opportunity. Now we saw the quality of the second shot. Is Mansell in the market for something special here? Okay. He certainly is. Four under his last three holes, nine under in total, suddenly one off the lead. That fist pump entirely warranted. Absolutely, it's great to see. Eagles on the back nine on Sunday. I don't think anybody's going to complain about those. Now to Simmons, we saw that nice little pitch. Lofted it up there nicely. I think it's a little bit late in the day. This to go to six under par, five behind, but still points to play for, money to play for. Still is the ship. Six under for the tournament. On to the 12th, another pivotal putt. Could Liza double his lead? Very Holding nice. steady. Well done. On the outside, remarkably composed, given the stakes. Ford bogeyed the 15th, falling back to third. Mansell is the hottest golfer out there, but for Liza, it's so far so good. All challengers are being repelled and quite a story remains on the cards here in Cadiz. Winter may be already biting in Northern Europe, but here in Spain, it remains plain sailing as far as golfing weather goes. And at the Andalusia Challenge there, Spania, the possibility of a home champion can't be ruled out following Pedro Oriol's up and down birdie on the 13th. That transported him into a share of third and he consolidated with a par at the next. Simonson, after a close start to the day, trying to get himself back into the mix. Makes birdie at 13, follows that up with a birdie at 14. He's going to go to minus seven. He's four off the lead. He's a fast finish. Well, in the wake of his bogey on 15, Matt Ford again struggling for par at 16. Trophy hopes seriously undermined. Mansell had this power putt 14, narrowly missed. Drops a shot, he'll go back down to eight on the par, three behind. While most made hay on the 13th, Andre Lizer toiled. But thanks to this chip and a gutsy putt, he safeguarded bogey-free status for the day, not to mention a healthy lead. The battle for the minor placings is intense. Mansell could yet bridge the gap, but it's Liza by three as he takes on the shortest, but by no means easiest hole at Ibero Star Real Club de Golf Novo Sancti Petri. Yeah, Liza here at 15, 182 yards. Slightly down the hill, he's eyeing it up. Great swing. So you want middle of the green at this stage, Ivan. You would know, James. Yeah, that's a good solid approach shot there. This closing stretch notoriously tough. Bird is always in short supply, but Mansell desperately needs them. Finding the fairway on 16 was important. What about that approach? Pin high, nicely done. You can't rule him out just yet. He must be up there in the running, surely. right here. He has dropped a couple of shots in the last three holes. This to take him to eight. Usual miss for the Englishman. Left himself a little bit of work to do as well. Mansell's second shot on 16 really did deserve a birdie. Will it work out? As we know, life doesn't always work that way. And as we saw on the previous green, he's getting a little bit animated, frustrated, just 
just wondering whether his hopes are fading. He's just desperate for that win, isn't he, Ivan? Now, he saw the first part of Ford. Give himself a little bit more than he'd like. Should be a good part. Good man, it's a good week. It's a good round of golf. Four and a par on the last day is always good. 68, seven under for the tournament. Currently in third position. Well, as we all know right now, you can never guarantee anything in life, and certainly that applies to the world of golf. But a birdie here from Liza on the 15th surely might just slam get that door. Just get in there. Well, it's still ajar. The pace was sensible. No alarms in recording that part. It keeps him in control, James. Absolutely. That's all you want to do is just get up there, tap in, stress-free golf. Onto the next hole. Good man, he's doing all the right things. Lysa keeping calm, carrying on. Three clear, but given the severity of the finish, not in danger of taking anything for granted just now. Up on 18, Oliver Lindell made a par for a closing 70. Certain to enjoy his best result of the season, that doesn't mean bogeys on the 16th and 17th won't leave a sour taste. So what news of Liza? Well, despite his apparent anguish on 16, he did make par there. Feeling it. And James, I wonder, how's his swing holding up in this situation? Well, it's holding up very well, and there's no question why. Doing all the right things, lovely balance move. I love that sawn off finish we've seen all day. As I said, no surprises why he's in the lead here, Ivan. Mantle on the 18th tee, tough finishing hole, 225 yard finishing hole, par three. Needs something special to happen if he's going to have any chance right now. Definitely needs a two. Well, that's a solid shot. Anytime you hit the green from 225 yards away, it's a good shot. He does need something dramatic there, he needs to hold that. Eliza hasn't found the fairway in 17, just off it. The lie isn't the best. 460 yard brute. It's been the most exacting hole on the course today. A hand came off the club there, that's never a good sign. And from there, a part by no means under lock and key. This story could yet have a twist. Now, Simpson. He's not going to win. Set off. Last. Okay. Uphill. I'm not happy with that. Now back at 17. The leader with quite a tight lie. I think he's going to go low here. Hmm. Not entirely convincing. Sure. Perhaps some tension creeping in. A shot that places even bigger significance on what Mansell does at the last. Yeah, no, undoubtedly there are some nerves flying about Ivan, as we see Mansell here. Yeah, well, stress-free. Tap-in should be a formality for him. Yeah. Oh wait, you'll move it back. enough for the win, but it is a very, very solid week again for Mansell, as we see him here. Good man. That's, that's him in the clubhouse at eight under. Second position. Now looking for Parr to wrap up his week. Simonson, who don't forget was the man to catch after 36 holes. Um, tidy in the end, just enough for tied fifth his loftiest finish in this most strange of seasons. Move it back, right? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, hard to get any momentum this year, but that's a, that's a nice top five position. For Simonson now, he's the chip. A little bit clunky, but he can be forgiven. Nice pace to that stroke. I think he had a good putt there. I think he overread that. Yeah. That's all we can do. Keep your head on. Still leading. One more to go. Oh, good. Leading it down on the last tee. 
So is there just a ray of hope for Mansell? Perhaps, because during the course of this event, we've seen several double bogeys, or worse, on 18. He may have one hand on the trophy, but not both on that silverware. Liza can take nothing for granted. One more effective swing, perhaps. That looks smooth enough to me. Never threatening the flag, but good enough. Liza's marching to a groundbreaking triumph for Eastern European golf. First contested in 1999, this year marks the 22nd edition of the Challenge de España. Spain's own Cole Sunderson captured the inaugural title. Although Sweden and France have been the most prolific nations since, both with four wins to their credit. One standout from those, Adrian Mork, champion in 2006, the same year that he carded the first ever round of 59 on the European Challenge or Senior Tours. More notable still was the 2013 edition in the Canary Islands. That's when an up-and-comer by the name of Brooks Kepka announced himself on the international scene. The second of three victories that season, sufficient to earn the American instant promotion to the European Tour, and the rest, as they say, is history. And James, that's surely a major source of inspiration for whoever lifts this one in 2020. No question. Some great winners on that on that trophy. We see Pedro here at the 18th. And another display of his magic touch. Tapping tap par for him to finish. Will be either seven in third position. But for sure, it looks like it's Liza's to lose from this stage. Three putts, not merely for individual glory, but for an entire emerging golfing nation to celebrate. On its way. Basically, he's home and dry, isn't he? Even though the game face remains, he can surely start to relax now. Yeah, that's a lovely feeling. I mean, you've got three putts from four feet to win, as we see Pedro here, which is a lovely chip shot. Just to finish on seven under. And a third position, great week for Pedro. Best finish of the year. Great to see him back to his normal. But you know, a tie for fourth in Italy at the beginning of October rubber stamped Liza's entry to this tournament and now look where he stands. Talk about making the most of your opportunity. With his second 67 of the weekend, Liza collecting the biggest payday of his career, a first prize of 32,000 euro. In these tough times, it's heartwarming to be reminded that sporting dreams can still come true. Congratulations too to leading amateur Rousseau, who posted the lowest round on Sunday. Mansell's fight should also be commended, but there's no disputing the lead story here in Andalusia. It was the poise of Andre Liza, being in the right place at the right time, to achieve the pinnacle of his golfing exploits so far. I have like three highlights of my life. First gonna be the birth of my baby girl, almost like one and a half year ago. Then my wedding with my wife, and this is gonna be on the third spot. And that's like what it means for me and for my family. I'm just doing that. I'm just playing golf and trying my best just to be good enough to take care of them. So that's my main goal. With only two counting tournaments left on the Challenge Tour this year, the road to Mallorca rankings have been shaken and stirred. Mansell's consolation, significantly closing that gap to number one, Marcel Schneider, and a great lead by Lysa, up to six. Teeing off in the third round, he was nine shots off the pace. But on a course where strategy is key, Andre Lysa made all the right moves to lift the trophy and the spirits of the Czech Republic the newest nation to supply a Challenge Tour champion. <laughs> 